The 8,533rd meeting of the Security Council is called to order. The professional agenda for this meeting is the situation in Somalia. The agenda is adopted. In accordance with Rule 37 of the Council's Professional Rules of Procedure, I invite the representative of Somalia to participate in this meeting. It is so decided. In accordance with Rule 39 of the Council Professional Rules of Procedure, I invite the following briefers to participate in the meeting. Mr. Raisedon Senenga, the Deputy Special Representative of the Secretary General and Officer in Charge of the United Nations Assistance Mission in Somalia. Mr. Francisco Caetano Jose Madeira, Special Representative of the Chairperson of the African Union Commission for Somalia and Head of the African Union Mission in Somalia. And Ms. Ursula Muller, the Assistant Secretary General for Humanitarian Affairs and Deputy Emergency Relief Coordinator of the United Nations Office for the Coordination of Humanitarian Affairs. It is so decided. Mr. Senenga and Mr. Madeira are joining via video teleconference from Mogadishu. Now the Security Council will now begin its consideration of item two of the agenda. I wish to draw the attention of Council members to document S-2019-393, the report of the Secretary General on Somalia. I now would like to give the floor to Mr. Raisedon Senenga. You have the floor. Uh, allow me, to, oh sorry, yeah, it's on. Thank you, Mr. President. Allow me to express my good wishes for the holy month of Ramadan. Mr. President, Unsum began the new year facing a security crisis as a result of the mortar attack on the UN compound on 1st January, and a political crisis as a result of the expulsion of SRSG Nicholas Heysom on the same day. The two incidents severely disrupted mandate implementation and the mission's engagement with the federal government of Somalia. They also elevated the security risk level for UN personnel and left our staff deeply demoralized. We immediately prioritized the safety and security of our staff while concentrating our efforts on mending relations with the federal government and putting mandate implementation back on track. Working together with UNSOS and the UN country team, we have taken measures to provide more secure accommodation, working space for our staff and to strengthen our resilience to mortar attacks. I thank UNSOS for the support it has provided. But last, a lasting solution to the continuing security threat will come from denying Al-Shabaab the space and opportunity to prepare and launch attacks. The UN system and international partners are working together to enable Somali security forces to dominate areas used to launch mortars and to support the implementation of a comprehensive Mogadishu security plan. We are making good progress on resetting UNSOM's relations with the federal government. Building on Under Secretary General Di Carlo's visit to Mogadishu in February, my discussions with Prime Minister Hassan Kaire have been constructive. We have agreed on arrangements to restore and strengthen the mission's engagement with the government, and the Prime Minister has assured me of his commitment to strengthen the relationship ahead of the arrival of the new SRSG. There will be challenges on the road ahead and there are still issues that will test the relationship with the federal government. But we are certainly in a better place than we were at the beginning of the year. Mandate implementation is back on track, particularly in the areas where we deliver technical support. These include preparations for the 2020 elections, 
the constitutional review process, capacity building for the police, and contributing to the planning for ongoing security operations, including stabilization activities. Working together with other international partners, we are also using our good offices to encourage dialogue between the federal government and the federal member states. Mr. President, despite the challenging security environment, the recurrent political crisis, as well as capacity constraints and the challenges of managing political obstacles to its reform agenda, Somalia has remained on a positive trajectory. During the reporting period, the country has made significant progress on its economic and security sector reforms. There has been progress on the inclusive politics agenda as well, including the constitutional review process and preparations for the universal suffrage elections. At the spring meetings of the IMF and the World Bank in April, participants commended Somalia for the achievements on its economic reforms. Satisfactory completion of the third staff monitored program has enabled the design of a fourth SMP that will pave the way for the heavily indebted poor countries initiative decision point anticipated in early 2020. The federal government has decided to apply the same rigorous approach to bring accountability and transparency to the security sector. For instance, biometric registration of all Somali National Army soldiers was completed in March. All 16,000 soldiers registered are now receiving their salaries directly into their bank accounts. This has cut out middlemen, reduced corruption, and ensures regular payment of salaries to military personnel. It it also paves the way for right-sizing the National Army. In parallel with these security sector reforms, the federal government has launched military operations in Lower Shabele region to have advanced the transitional plan, degrade Al-Shabaab strongholds that are contiguous to Mogadishu, and thereby arrest the recent increase in Al-Shabaab attacks in Mogadishu. In an unprecedented development, current military operations supported by AMISOM, UNSOS, and international partners have catalyzed joint planning and systematic generation of capable, accountable, acceptable, and affordable Somali National Army units. They have also demonstrated the value of a comprehensive approach to security by incorporating stabilization and policing elements in the military operations and reinvigorated the implementation of the transition plan. Technical preparations for universal suffrage elections in 2020 are making progress. The process of identifying potential voters, voter registration sites began this month. The National Independent Electoral Commission has opened offices in most of the federal member states. The draft political parties bill and the electoral bill have been approved by the federal cabinet and submitted to parliament. However, the electoral bill remains a contentious issue with federal member states. The adoption of these bills is absolutely essential for political road for the political roadmap to remain on track. And we urge all stakeholders to work towards reaching agreement that can be translated into parliamentary approval in the coming months. A technical revision of nine of the 15 chapters of the provisional federal constitution has been undertaken. This is a significant achievement, but ultimately, progress will be measured against political agreements between the federal government and federal member states on key areas of the constitution, including power and resource sharing. Important progress has also been made on human rights. Following the, the violence which resulted in civilian casualties during the elections in Southwest State 
last December, both the federal government and Southwest state authorities have completed investigations into the killing of civilians. Southwest state has also conducted reconciliation meetings with the communities involved and agreed to pay reparations to the families of the victims. On 18th May, the federal parliament ratified the Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities. The ratification will now go to the president for his signature. I congratulate the federal government on this important step to promote and protect the rights of persons with disabilities. Mr. President, Somalia continues to grapple with significant challenges. The federal government's reform efforts have encountered inevitable resistance. The economic reforms and security sector reforms in particular entail dismantling a war economy that had flourished for decades. There are many vested interests which pose obstacles to increased accountability. <clears throat> Taking on these vested interests requires not only the determination which the federal government has shown, but an inclusive approach of building relationships with all stakeholders to demonstrate that reforms will yield benefits for the whole nation. Full and sustainable implementation of Somalia's priorities hinges on the restoration of cooperation between the federal government and federal member states' leadership. Though it was an important step towards the resumption of dialogue, the consultative meeting held between the leaders of the federal government and federal member states in Garoway from the 5th to the 10th of May failed to reach agreement on any of the substantive issues and on the date, format, and venue of the next meeting. Together with other international partners, we continue to encourage the federal government and the federal member states leaders to urgently resume dialogue and cooperation, which are indispensable for the sustainable implementation of reforms. The disputed electoral processes in Garmuduk and Jubaland, scheduled respectively for July and August, were discussed during the consultative meeting. They have become a source of concern. As was the case in Southwest State last year, the risk of violence is very high. We continue to urge the federal and regional authorities to draw lessons from Southwest State as well as good practices from the jubilant, from the Puntland elections and to manage disputes over the upcoming electoral processes in a manner that avoids conflict and ensures transparency and fairness. Mr. President, the dialogue between Somalia and Somaliland, which, was, which also has implications for the completion of the constitutional review process, remains stalled. <clears throat> we are, however, encouraged by Somaliland President Musa Bihi's <clears throat> remarks on 18th May, expressing his readiness to promote peace with Puntland, including through the exchange of prisoners, and to cooperate with Somalia on issues related to security, trade, and education. Mr. President, the positive dynamics in the Horn of Africa region hold great opportunities for Somalia to realize its, its strategic and economic potential. However, the ongoing deterioration of relations between Somalia and Kenya emanating from the maritime boundary dispute is worrying. It has implications for Somalia's state building and peace building efforts. Dialogue not only between Kenya and Somalia, but also with other IGAD member states, is essential to lower tensions and address the fundamental issues that have created the continuing tensions. Mr. President, Somalia has the floor to the distinguished representative of the United Kingdom. You have the floor, Ambassador. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. President. 
Uh, and a huge thank you uh, to our briefers, Mr. Zanenga and Mr. Madeira, and to the Assistant Secretary General. Um, it's very good to have this. It's the first um, briefings we've had since Ansom's mandate uh, was renewed. Um, I think the first thing to say, uh, Mr. President, is that when we had the last meeting, uh, we all noted, many of us noted, that 2019 uh, would be a very important year uh, for Somalia. And my, I might even go as far as to say it would set the trend of Somalia's development uh, for years to come. Uh, I think an important uh, signifier of that uh, is the new uh, special representative of the Secretary General. Uh, and we hope uh, he can be in post soon. Uh, and we hope in turn uh, that that becomes an opportunity uh, to reset the UN-Somalia uh, relationship uh, and to find a way forward uh, on the panel of experts. Uh, restoration of cooperation uh, with the UN and the international community is very important. I know the Somali uh, government has been thinking uh, about this as well, uh, and that's very welcome. Uh, I think the ASG's last points uh, show quite why this is so uh, critical. Uh, Somalia needs the... Um, guidance and um, technical capability uh, of the UN to help it uh, with some of the um, uh, detailed issues that the ASG was, was mentioning. Um, I just wanted to thank uh, Mr. Renenga uh, for uh, standing in and holding the fort uh, in the interregnum uh, between the two uh, SRSGs. Uh, I think it's important on an occasion like this, Mr. President, to say something about the bravery of Amazon uh, in Somalia uh, and also the great efforts uh, made by the African Union, uh, which we appreciate. Uh, the UN, Somalia and international partners there need to work in tandem to deliver the transition plan. I think that in tandem, in cooperation, uh, working coherently together is a really vital part of the prospects for success. And we all want to get to a stage where Somalia leads on providing security for its people. Uh, so for the United Kingdom, we really welcome efforts to build the impetus uh, in the Amazon mandate renewal uh, currently ongoing. Uh, but I would just stress, Mr. President, that in my experience... Um, these things work best when troop numbers are allied to the tasks that the troops have to do uh, and not the other way around. Um, as I said, this 2019 is important. In fact, probably the next 12 months are going to be critical to making progress on political, economic and security reforms uh, ahead of the elections in 2020, 2021. Uh, and we all know that political agreements between the federal government and the federal member states are going to be at the heart of Somalia's stability and prosperity. Um, I think in order to bring that about, uh, it's very important that there's regular and constructive dialogue between the federal government and the federal member states, uh, particularly on the constitutional review, the electoral law, the implementation of the security pact, and the delivery of the transition plan. Um, and I was you know, interested uh, to see about the prospects for the Somalia Partnership Forum, which will meet this summer. Uh, I think the Council, Mr. President, would find it useful uh, to have regular meetings and briefings so that we can help uh, chart progress. Um, I think it's important that we think about uh, how we can support all sides uh, being able to fulfil the agreed partnership principles uh, in that forum. And it'd be very good uh, to have a sense of where the UN sees uh, the key priorities uh, there and how they uh, relate to the National Development Plan. Uh, I just wanted to say something about the humanitarian situation. We wanted to have a humanitarian brief because of the deterioration. Uh, as a result of the drought. 
Um, in some ways, the early warning indicators we see uh, are worse than those we witnessed two years ago. Uh, we are about to announce uh, additional support. Um, we hope others uh, might be able uh, to do likewise. Um, I think we all know there's a real opportunity here uh, to um, help Somalia uh, get back on track, uh, but it has very many components, one of which is cooperation with the UN. Obviously, the transition plan uh, is important and, in fact, critical. Uh, and anything AMISOM uh, can do to support transition priorities uh, is also uh, very critical. Thank you. I thank the distinguished ambassador of the UK. Uh, now I would like to give the floor to the distinguished representative of South Africa. Yes, the floor. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Mr. President, South Africa wishes to thank uh, the Deputy SRSG, Zenenga, uh, the AU SRCC, Francisco Madeira, and me, the ASG, Ashla Muller, as well as to, for, for their briefing, as well as to thank the Secretary General for his report. My delegation commends the UN Secretary General Guterres and the role that UNSOM and UNSOS have been playing in facilitating uh, state building and peace building processes in Somalia, in line with the mandate provided by this council. It is without doubt that UNSOM and UNSOS, as well as AMISOM, have contributed positively in the prevailing development trajectory in Somalia. South Africa welcomes the comprehensive reform agenda of the federal government of Somalia, which includes four roadmaps aimed at maintaining processes, progress in the inclusive uh, politics, security and justice, economic recovery, social and human development. Mr. President, despite the efforts of AMISOM, UNSOM, UNSOS, together with Somali security forces and international partners in the security sector. We note with serious concern that Al-Shabaab and other armed groups continue to be a source of instability in some parts of Somalia, including Mogadishu. The continued atrocities by Al-Shabaab against civilians, government facilities, government officials, the Somali security forces, army some personnel are alarming and must be condemned. While we agree that in the long term, Somalia needs to be able to take ownership of addressing its own security challenges, we also realize that the federal government of Somalia cannot do this on its own, given the capacity limitation of the Somali security forces. The area of capacity building is one that requires sustained and coordinated international support. In this regard, South Africa calls for the continuation of the implementation of a comprehensive approach to security, encompassing international coordination and joint planning by AMISOM, the federal government, federal member states, UNSOM, UNSOS, and international partners, amongst others. Mr. President, it is our firm view that sustained and inclusive dialogue is imperative between the federal government of Somalia and the federal member states to resolve their differences in order to move the state building and peace building process forward. Equally, there is pertinence in resolving the current stalemate uh, between the two houses of federal parliament. Cooperation between the two houses is important for the processing of the legislative framework envisaged in the implementation of the transitional plan. We encourage state building and peace building processes to be inclusive uh, with meaningful involvement of women and youth. We commend UNSOM for providing assistance to the Somali authorities on promoting women and youth participation in the processes of state building and peace building. South Africa is pleased with the notable progress registered in the constitution review process we urge the federal government of Somalia to finalize outstanding issues pertaining to the constitution with a view 
to adopting it before the elections take place. Mr. President, the progress made towards finalizing a national reconciliation framework, the guiding document for nationwide reconciliation, is a welcome development. Furthermore, we commend the National Independent Electoral Commission for advancing preparations for voter registration for the 2020 21 elections. With respect to humanitarian issues, my delegation continues to support the, the support of the humanitarian, con, the continued support of the humanitarian situation in Somalia remains paramount. In this regard, we urge the international community to support the Somali 2019 humanitarian response plan in order for the humanitarian community to deliver necessary services for civilians in need, including to ensure their security, issues around state building and resilience uh, that was uh, uh, commented on by Ms. Muller. In conclusion, Mr. President, we want to commend AMISOM for its role in supporting the implementation of the Somali transition plan, as well as for training and capacitating the Somali National Security Force. I thank you. I thank the distinguished representative of South Africa. Now I'd like to give the floor to the distinguished representative of the United States. Thank you, Mr. President, and thank you to today's briefers. Clearly, Somalia continues to face significant challenges on its path toward building a safe, stable, and prosperous state. We strongly condemn recent attacks by al-Shabaab and other terrorist elements and express our full support to the Somali government, the AU, and Amazon in this fight. We are pleased that progress is underway through political security and constitutional reform efforts with support from the UN, the African Union, and international partners. Advancing implementation of these reforms offers the country the greatest hope for sustainable stability and economic growth. We note that none of these reforms would be possible without the contributions and sacrifices of Amazon troop contributing and police contributing members, which have provided the federal government of Somalia the necessary space and stability for the government to develop the national security architecture and implement these reforms. Mr. President, the transfer of security responsibilities from the African Union mission in Somalia to Somalia Nation National Security Forces is a top priority. We urge the FGS to continue the efforts to generate and deploy security forces that will allow for a timely and orderly implementation of the transition plan. We underscore the need for all parties to coordinate closely to avoid security coverage gaps that could be exploited by malign actors. On Somalia's 2020-2021 elections, we urge the government to finalize its draft electoral law to define a fair and transparent electoral system. We also emphasize the need for close coordination between the government AMISOM and UNSOM to ensure voter security during each stage of the electoral preparation. Mr. President, concerning constitutional reform, we stress that long-term political stability depends on defining the relationships and divisions of power and responsibility between the FGS and federal member states. As such, we urge all governmental stakeholders to come together and finalize this critical reform. On the arms embargo, We've encouraged Somalia to engage productively with the panel of experts and will continue to do so. Somalia appears to believe that the Security Council will eventually lift the sanctions despite a lack of engagement with the panel. The United States will not support this view, which does nothing to address the problems the sanction regime was designed to address and indeed undermines the actions of the Security Council. Mr. President, finally, as noted by Assistant Secretary General Mueller, the ongoing humanitarian crisis affecting more than 5 million Somalis is an important backdrop to the political and security reforms we've discussed. Since 2018, the United States has provided more than $487 million in humanitarian assistance. We're working with the UN and other partners to provide critical food and nutrition assistance for nearly 1.5 million people across Somalia. We encourage continued international support on the humanitarian front. I thank you for your attention. I thank the distinguished representative of the United States. Now I would like to give the floor to the distinguished representative of China. You have the floor. Thank you, Mr. President. China, thanks. Deputy Special Representative, Mr. Zinanga, Mr. 
Francisco Madeira, Special Representative of the Chairperson of the AU Commission, and ASG Ms. Miller for the briefings. Since the end of last year, with the concerted efforts of the Somalia federal government, the UN, the AU, and the rest of the international community, Somalia has seen positive progress in the rebuilding of the state, in particular in security capacity building. China commends the Somalia federal government, the UN agencies on the ground, and AMISOM for their efforts. Somalia is an important country in the Horn of Africa. Maintaining its peace and stability is in the common interests of the region and the international community as a whole. At present, the overall situation in Somalia remains complex, and looking ahead, it faces challenges on multiple fronts. The Security Council, the UN, and the international community should draw on the past experiences and lessons in helping address hotspot issues in Africa, such as this one, and provide better support and ass assistance. China would like to highlight the following three points. First, we should fully respect and maintain the national ownership of the Somalia federal government in its domestic affairs. We should respect the sovereignty, independence, and territorial integrity of Somalia, help establish an authoritative and capable federal government, and optimize its federal institutions. We should strengthen communication coordination with the Somalia government, give full play to its own initiative, and improve its ability to achieve development on its own. Secondly, we should continue to support the efforts of AU and other regional sub regional organizations to help maintain peace and security in Somalia. At present, Somalia is still faced with serious threats from Al Shabaab. It is necessary for AMISOM to continue its deployment in Somalia. China supports the Security Council in extending AMISOM's mandate and supports. Amisom in keeping necessary forces in the country. We hope that the UN and the international community should provide stable, predictable, and sustainable financial support to Amisom, help relevant TCCs with their capacity building so as to fight Al Shabaab more effectively. At the same time, the international community should continue to help Somalia to improve its security capacity building in order to ensure that the Somalia security force could take over the maintenance of security responsibilities from AMISOM in a gradual and steady manner. Thirdly, we should continue to increase the humanitarian assistance and social economic development support to Somalia. The social and economic foundation in Somalia is weak, and there is still a relatively big gap in international humanitarian assistance. We hope all international partners honor their commitments in earnest and provide assistance in a timely manner. China will continue to actively support the Somalia peace process and play a constructive role in realizing peace, stability, and development in Somalia and the Horn of Africa. Thank you, Mr. President. I thank the distinguished representative of China. Now I'd like to give the floor to the distinguished representative of Côte d'Ivoire. Thank you, Mr. President. My delegation welcomes the holding of this meeting devoted to considering the report of the Secretary General on the development of the situation in Somalia for the period 13 December 2018 to 4 May 2019, as well as the implementation of the mandates of the United Nations Assistance Mission and the United Nations Support Office in Somalia. We congratulate, because of their enriching briefings, Mr. Raisidon Zenenga, Deputy Special Representative of the Secretary General, uh, for, and OIC of UNSAM, Mr. Francisco Caetano Jose Madeira, Special Representative of the Chairperson of the African Union Commission for Somalia and Head of Amisan, and uh, Ms. Ursula Müller, Assistant Secretary General for Humanitarian Affairs and coordinator of the United Nations Office for the Coordination of Humanitarian Affairs. These briefings uh, uh, call uh, my delegation to make comments on the political, economic, security, humanitarian issues, uh, and the issues of human rights. Mr. President, on the political level, Cote d'Ivoire is pleased that the recent initiatives to relaunch the political process and reconcile the f uh, federal 
government and the federal member states, which had broken off for several months because of the deep differences opposing the leaders of political parties. We call on the parties concerned to continue this positive dy dynamic and speed up the implementation of the roadmap, especially through the conclusion of agreements to share power and resources. We also call on the two chambers of the federal government to settle their differences and open uh, a clear cooperation in order to adopt uh, urgently needed laws. On the economic uh, scale, uh, we note with satisfaction the not remarkable progress made by the federal government in implementing its budget policy, especially the net improvement in tax collection thanks to the uh, extension of the tax base and the strengthening of collection capacities. We encourage the federal uh, government to redouble its efforts uh, in uh, this vein, especially when it comes to implementing the reference uh, program of the IMF. Mr. President, when it comes to security, my delegation is concerned at the instability prevailing in Somalia, as well as the severe threat uh, al-Shabaab continues to pose with increased attacks and targeted killings. We firmly condemn these attacks, and we call on the government of Somalia to intensify its efforts uh, to uh, di uh, dissipate the threat uh, posed by al-Shabaab. Mr. President, when it comes to human rights, uh, Cote d'Ivoire is uh, greatly concerned at the increased number of civilian victims and uh, as well as uh, other atrocities uh, of al-Shabaab, uh, including uh, summary executions, threats to freedom of expression, sexual violence, and violence against children. We call on all parties co to concern to respect, protect, and promote uh, human rights. In this regard, we uh, welcome the reaffirmation by the Prime Minister of Somalia of his country's will to keep its commitments uh, for human rights uh, as a newly elected member of the Council of Human Rights of the United Nations. On the humanitarian level, Mr. President, Cote d'Ivoire notes with deep concern that the persistent conflict and uh, food insecurity provoked by lack of rain resulting in a number of displaced people will increase the needs uh, for assistance and perfection, which will affect 4.2 million people in 2019. It is therefore imperative to quickly respond to the appeal of the Secretary General to finance uh, the humanitarian response uh, uh, plan for 2019. The plan's needs for the next six months are estimated at $674 million. Our mobilization will make it possible not only to provide uh, vitally needed assistance uh, to the many Somalis in distress, but also to support them on the path to resilience and uh, recovery. My delegation is also concerned at the operation context, which is increasingly difficult for humanitarian actors, especially because of acts of violence against them and uh, the uh, number of setbacks uh, through, uh, and obstacles through the main supply routes. To conclude, Mr. President, the Cote d'Ivoire hails the indispensable role Unsum plays through its strategic councils, its good officers, its uh, activities for capacity building, and its action to coordinate the, the support provided by international partners. We also pay tribute to uh, Un uh, Amazon personnel because of the sacrifices uh, made for security in this country. We also reiterate our support for UNSAS and other international partners in Somalia. We call on them to reinforce their cooperation in order to contribute to promoting reconciliation and peace in that country. Thank you very much. Sir. I thank the distinguished <coughs> uh, representative of Cote d'Ivoire. Now I would like to give the floor to the distinguished representative of Equatorial Guinea. Thank you, Mr. President. I wish to begin by expressing my gratitude to your delegation for having programmed this important meeting during the month of your presidency. I also wish to express my gratitude to all the briefers this afternoon for the very comprehensive, illustrative reports which have given us a detailed picture of the present situation in Somalia. Mr. President, our delegation is closely following the events in our uh, sister republic uh, of Somalia. 
we are informed uh, about uh, the political stalemate between the federal government and the federal member states. The situation is reported both in the previous uh, report of the Secretary General as in this latest one before us. Somali politicians should make the necessary effort to emerge from the situation which is unworthy of a country in such a delicate process as this one. We therefore call on the political leaders of Somalia to realize the reconciliation measures adopted in Garoue on 26 January. We also call on the members of the two chambers of the federal parliament who stopped cooperating at, at the beginning of January this year to comply with our obligations and resume cooperation in order to put the parliament's program into place and approve the urgently needed laws for the people and various areas of Somali society. We welcome the broad reform uh, program presented by the federal government as part of its effort uh, to construct a functional federal state structured around four roadmaps, the purpose of which is to continue making progress in the area of inclusive policy, security, and justice, economic recovery, and social and human uh, d development. We call on the United Nations, the African Union, the African the European Union and other international partners to support this major program. Mr. President, it is our hope that in this new phase the federal government is entering, the limited uh, political participation of women and the, their re small role in decision making will not remain as they now stand. In this regard, we call on federal and regional authorities, as well as civil society and the international community to achieve a more prominent participation for women. When it comes to security issues, we deplore the ongoing attacks, uh, bombings and killings conducted uh, uh, continuously by al-Shabaab. This is a potential threat which can sow chaos both in Somalia and the Horn of Africa. We hope uh, that the agreements negotiated with international partners on uh, security reforms will be a timely fashion to reduce uh, this threat. We welcome strengthened uh, relations between Somalia and other countries in the Horn of uh, Africa. Mr. President, and it is our hope uh, that these relations will continue to develop uh, to promote sectors which will be mutually beneficial to all countries in the region, including the security sector, which is of great importance at this time of terrorist threats. We also welcome the efforts of the presidents of Somalia and Kenya to initiate the process of normalizing their relations. It is our hope that, that their ambassadors will be able to return to their respective diplomatic posts, as already stated by the foreign ministers of both states in Nairobi on April 3rd. Now, see, Mr. President, we wish to express our gratitude to UNSUM for its willingness uh, to continue providing strategic support and advice uh, to Somalia and to Amazon on peace building and uh, uh, building the state uh, in the areas of governance, uh, security sector reform, and constitutional review. UNSUM's support is vital. It will continue to be, be, uh, be so because of the volatile, precarious uh, situation in Somalia and the efforts uh, needed to consolidate uh, in a sustainable fashion the results achieved. Thank you very much, sir. I thank the distinguished representative of Equatorial Guinea. Now I would like to give floor to the distinguished representative of Kuwait. You have the floor. Shukran, Sayyid Rais. Thank you, uh, President. I would like 
to start by thanking the Deputy Special Representative of the Secretary General, Mr. Raisi Donzaniga, for his important uh, presentation on the efforts of the UN Assistance Mission to Somalia in Somalia to in support of the federal government in uh, achieving peace and development for the Somali people. I also thank the uh, chair of the African Union Commission and head of Amazon for his presentation on the efforts of the mission in preserving security and in rehabilitating the national security forces. This demonstrates the importance of this matter for the African Union Commission to ensure that Somalia is uh, um, successful and uh, we look forward to the renewal of the, m of the mandate uh, once some Now I'd also like to thank Madam Ursula Miller, um, Assistant Secretary General for Humanitarian Affairs and Deputy Emergency Relief Coordinator uh, for her presentation uh, on the humanitarian tragedy faced by the Somali people after decades of poverty, armed violence, political instability, uh, natural disasters and underdevelopment. All this has led to an, an increase in the humanitarian needs. Indeed, one-third of the population required assistance. Uh, um, uh, the number of IDPs has reached 2.6 million people. The Council last month addressed a very clear message with demonstrating its unity in terms of the support uh, for Somalia by extending uh, the mandate of UNSUM unanimously as part of Resolution 2461. This resolution demonstrates that the Council supports Somalia and the United Nations in their efforts uh, to build a federal state to capable of uh, coping with the difficulties that the various uh, speakers uh, described to us. Allow me to highlight the following matters. First of all, political developments. We welcome the significant progress uh, uh, by the federal government in ensuring reconciliation and developing national institutions in spite of significant challenges that undermine the implement achievement of priorities. Um, we also uh, uh, welcome the uh, acceleration of the implementation of the transition plan. We count on the government's roadmap in implementing its program of political reforms, uh, at the head of which is the revision of the Constitution, uh, transitional Constitution this year, and the establishment of a legal framework for elections, the adoption by the Council of Ministers of a, an electoral law, a law on political parties, as well as progress achieved by the independent National Independent Electoral Commission to register voters by using biometric data. Secondly, the security situation. Uh, the Al-Shabaab movement remains the main threat. We note uh, an increase in a attacks recently, and we uh, would like to reiterate our strongest condemnation of these attacks, and in particular the attacks that uh, uh, targeted the UN compound near the airport in Mogadishu as well as the attacks which targeted various uh, uh, facilities around the country, including hotels, and in particular the uh, attack against the Ministry of Labor and Public Works, and which cost the life of the Vice uh, uh, Minister of Labor. These incidents demonstrate that it's important to step up efforts to uh, and ensure the effectiveness of AMISOM, uh, strengthen national security forces, and uh, the independence of Somali institutions. It's important for the state to uh, regain its control over all sectors and uh, to uh, cope, to be able to cope with the violence and, and violent extremism. And we welcome the cooperation between the UN and the EU and the new uh, concept of operations, in particular in the framework of the gradual uh, uh, decrease in the uh, personnel the mission. Third area, economic development uh, progress uh, of Somalia in the in economic development is something that we uh, would like to welcome in particular as part of the uh, uh, poor, highly indebted countries. 
uh, the government has started uh, producing results by strength building its capacities in order to increase its resources and this is the view of the IMF and we believe that uh, after the adoption of the law on finances and the combat, combating corruption, more progress will be seen as well as as a result of structural adjustments. In conclusion, we know that this is a particularly important year in terms of uh, implementing political agreements and strengthening the Federation. And uh, this means that we as a council have a particular responsibility to implement our common vision to help uh, the Somalis build a federal state that uh, uh, upholds the uh, rights and fundamental freedoms of all Somalis. Thank you very much. I thank the distinguished representative of Kuwait. Now I would like to give the floor to the distinguished representative of France. We have the floor. <coughs> Monsieur le Président. Mr. President, I'd like to start by thanking uh, the speakers for their very detailed presentations. I uh, will just make three main points. First of all, in a fragile context, uh, both from in terms of uh, the security situation and humanitarian situation, we are worried about the delay in the implementation of the transition period uh, plan and uh, the security pact signed in London in May of 2017, as well as the integration of the regional forces in the framework of the national architecture of security, as underlined in the report uh, of the joint UN-African Union review uh, of Amazon. We uh, believe that a constructive dialogue between the federal government and the federal member states is necessary to uh, uh, make progress in federalism, the review of the con revision of the Constitution, or prepare the elections in 2020-2021. Progress achieved by Somali authorities in the economic sphere demonstrate that when, when the political will is there, a real progress is possible. We would have wanted this political uh, will and determination to be more clearly to, to clearly manifest itself during the recent Garui meeting. The second point I'd like to focus on. For the security transition to be a success, we believe that it's necessary for Amazon to continue its reconfiguration in support of the transition plan. I'd like to take this opportunity to pay a tribute to, uh, to Amazon uh, whose personnel is deployed in a very difficult context. The Baghbado operation underway where Amazon is supporting the Somali army and liberating areas of south of Mogadishu is an example of good cooperation in support of the implementation of the transition plan. In this context, we believe that it is possible and necessary to continue with a moderate reduction of the Amazon troop ceiling in order to continue to encourage the implementation of the security transition. The idea is not to withdraw troops from particularly sensitive areas or from Mogadishu, but rather from more stable areas. Furthermore, we believe that it's very important uh, that new partners, in particular those identified in the reports of the Special Envoy of the UN and the African Union on the financing of Amazon, uh, commit themselves and participate to financing Amazon. Given the the many requests for support from the African Union, the European Union, indeed, cannot continue to finance by itself the bonuses paid to uh, soldiers of Amazon. Lastly, and this will be my third and last point, I would like to uh, uh, comment on the issue of cooperation between the Somali authorities and the United Nations. Indeed, while the uh, international community should continue to support Somalia, this uh, support should be part of a cooperation based on reciprocal uh, engagements and mutual respect. This is precisely the approach that, that uh, the European Union and its member states have decided on, so we expect a resumption of full cooperation of the Somalian federal authorities with the United Nations as uh, requested by the Council in its Resolution 2461, and in particular when the new Special Representative of the Secretary General will be uh, named uh, in a nomination that we uh, hope will take place quickly. Mr. Uh, President, I would like to ask two questions uh, from our speakers. Could you tell us a little bit about uh, what prospects uh, for, the, for the implementation of the transition plan and in the integration of the regional forces uh, of, into a national uh, security architecture? Thank you. I thank the distinguished representative of France. Now I would like to give the floor to the distinguished representative of Peru. Thank you very much, sir. 
Thank you for convening this meeting and uh, for the important briefings uh, by Mr. President Zenenga, Mr. Sam Miller, and Mr. Francisco Caetano Madeira. The latest report of the Secretary General stresses important measures which the federal government of Somalia has taken to build a functional federal state. We hope that the reform program presented by the government can be implemented to move towards an inclusive policy, achieving security and justice, and achieving economic recovery and sustainable development. We praise uh, the government's financial management, which in recent years has led to increase in income. However, we are concerned that a major part of the population continues to be exposed to poverty and food insecurity, and that 90 percent of homes have no access to basic services such as education, water, and sanitation. To these challenges is added persistent uh, violent extremism, terrorism, and armed conflict inter alia. We note with concern that in recent months uh, there have been increased uh, attacks with uh, improvised explosive devices uh, by al-Shabaab. We reiterate our condemnation of these terrorist attacks, and we pay tribute to Amundsen and uh, Somali security forces for this selfless work. We must recall that it is only through cooperation and reconciliation that the people of Somalia can respond to these challenges. In this regard, the recent measures of the federal government and federal member states uh, directed to promote dialogue, such as the uh, meeting in Garoe, Puntland, last February, are encouraging. We hope these actions uh, are, will be the beginning of a sustained political dialogue, which will make it possible to continue making progress in applying uh, uh, political priorities, uh, such as the process of constitutional review, federalism, and uh, reconciliation, and the holding of elections. We stress uh, the importance of promoting active participation of women in Somalia's, in Somalia's political life, uh, as well as in the social and economic areas. We note with concern the grave uh, humanitarian situation for millions of Somalis, especially internally displaced people and marginalized communities. This will be aggravated by the announced drought. We believe it is indispensable for the international community to increase its financial support which should be complemented by predictable assistance to create resilience and for recovery. With regard to the joint uh, consideration by AMISM of the transition progress uh, for security in Somalia, we support the recommendations of the joint uh, review team. We believe that it's at this phase, uh, it is important to keep the numbers of AMISM at the current scale. We believe that the reconfiguration of AMISM and the passage uh, of uh, the facilities to Somali t Somalian security institutions should be conducted, bearing in mind the humanitarian consequences. I wish to conclude, uh, Mr. President, by praising the work of AMISM Ansam and Ansas to support the efforts of the authorities and people of Somalia to achieve peace and stability, as well as the efforts of the African Union, the Intergovernmental uh, Authority for Development, and the United Nations. Thank you very much. I thank the representative of Peru for his statement. Now I'd like to, bring, to give the floor to the district representative of Poland, if the floor ambassador. Thank you, Mr. President. Allow me to begin by thanking our today's briefers for their very informative presentations. Poland welcomes the progress achieved so far in Somalia towards peace building and state building and commends the ambitious reform agenda set by the federal government. At the same time, you are aware of the fragility of the situation. We are deeply worried by raising numbers of Ash-Shabaab's attacks and by increased ISIL's presence in Somalia. We are concerned about the political impasse between the federal government 
and federal member states and the suspension of cooperation between the two houses of the federal parliament. The ongoing stalemate puts at risk the gains made today in Somalia and threatens the timelines of crucial reforms, as well as the whole federation, uh, federal, uh, federalization process. We call on all political actors in Somalia to undertake reconciliatory and confidence-building steps and engage in a constructive dialogue for the benefit of Somali population. We also call on foreign regional actors for impartial support for the national reconciliation process. At the same time, we request, uh, we request the Somali authorities for the cooperation with the UN actors based on the mutual trust and respect. Protection of human rights and freedoms is an essential part of democracy. We note with concern reports on human rights violations committed not only by Al-Shabaab, but also by government and regional forces and clan militias. We are particularly worried by the reports about the recruitment of children. We find it unacceptable and call on authorities to intensify efforts aimed at raising awareness on child protection and threatening policies preventing recruitment of children in Somali forces. Mr. President, Poland believes that the success of ambitious reforms agenda and development of Somalia requires concerted efforts of all actors as well as international coordination. We see the comprehensive approach to security as an important framework of alignment of donors' support with priorities set by Somali authorities. Let me conclude, Mr. President, by expressing Poland's appreciation for UN actors and AMISOM in Somalia for their everyday efforts and sacrifice. On the eve of AMISOM's mandate renewal, we believe that AMISOM's drawdown plan should include specific steps and realistic timetable of transfer of responsibility from the mission to the Somali National Army. At the same time, the need for a burden sharing with regard to AMISOM uh, financing become more pressing than ever. Thank you, Mr. President. I thank the distinguished representative of Poland. Now I would like to give the floor to the distinguished representative of the Dominican Republic. Thank you, Mr. President. I'd like to uh, thank um, Mr. Zenenga, Madam Miller, and Mr. Caetano Madeira for uh, their presentations today. Mr. President, we uh, commend the efforts of the federal government in uh, uh, developing and improving uh, draft uh, na framework for national reconciliation with the aim of ending violence and rebuilding trust uh, among communities in order to overcome their differences. And we urge uh, the parties, in particular the Somali leaders, to uh, make every effort necessary to achieve a peaceful and lasting solution of their uh, political di differences. We uh, observe the uh, uh, stale stalemate uh, between the federal government and the federal uh, member states. Uh, we believe that uh, um, it should be a priority to deal with this in order to achieve national reconciliation. We'd like to also express our deep uh, concern for the, uh, regarding the vulnerability uh, uh, of security in Somalia, and we condemn uh, al-Shabaab uh, regarding their attacks. We welcome progress achieved in uh, revising the Constitution, and we urge all actors to continue making necessary efforts uh, uh, in order to make sure that this process is inclusive, transparent, and ensures the participation of all sectors of society. And uh, the uh, uh, adoption of a draft uh, electoral law based on the principle of proportionality and inclu inclusiveness is very important, as well as uh, uh, the constitutional review, uh, especially uh, 
important for women. It's important. It's uh, very important to continue making efforts to ensure greater participation and uh, involvement in leadership of women so that uh, women are involved at all levels. This is why the increase in the quota of women in the electoral law is very important. Uh, and it's important to achieve at least 30% of electoral uh, uh, seats uh, uh, among for women in the 2020 elections. Mr. President, regarding youth in Somalia, we note that 70% of the population uh, is younger than 30 years uh, and uh, youth unemployment is among the highest in the world. The lack of uh, job opportunities and the lack of social and recreative opportunities worsen the situation of vulnerability, le leading young people uh, towards conflict and participating in radical groups such as al-Shabaab or in piracy. We uh, uh, think that it's very important to implement programs that promote uh, a change, uh, a wholesale change in in uh, lives of young people, so that they can seek new opportunities and achieve their potential. Mr. President, the Dominican Republic urges the parties to continue making necessary efforts to uh, uh, cease the recruitment and the use of children, uh, uh, to ensure their release. Uh, and reintegration, as well as the amnesty for children who who have been sentenced to prison for their association with armed groups. We urge all uh, entities uh, involved in protection of civilians in the country to uh, increase their efforts to create mechanisms to protect the most vulnerable, in particular IDPs, and especially women and children who are particularly exposed to high levels of insecurity and violence. Mr. President, the impact of climate change, which has led to a, a severe drought, continue to be a major challenge for Somalia. In addition to the vulnerabilities and the lack of resilience of communities, this impact has led to a worrying uh, Worse, a worrisome worsening of the humanitarian needs in the country, where a third of the population requires assistance to to survive. Uh, food insecurity, caused uh, mostly by climate uh, adverse climate conditions, and has led to the loss of uh, harvests and cattle, continues to put at risk the lives of one and a half million people, especially children. We uh, would like to uh, express our concern regarding the difficulties uh, for. Uh, access uh, by humanitarian actors, especially in vulnerable areas. They're often victims of violence, abductions, and restriction to their movement, both within and outside of areas that require humanitarian assistance. We commend the efforts of the s state and local authorities uh, in uh, ensuring the implementation of humanitarian programs. We understand that it's, it's important for the international community to, to double its efforts uh, uh, to provide support, and we suggest that uh, uh, they contribute to a fund in order to allevi alleviate the uh, most urgent humanitarian needs in Somalia. To conclude, Mr. President, I'd like to highlight and acknowledge the role that UNSUS, AMISOM, and UNSUM have played, and all the actors uh, who uh, stand shoulder to shoulder with Somalia in order to help it achieve peace, uh, uh, stabi lasting stability, and uh, um, a lasting solution. Thank you. I thank the distinguished representative of the Dominican Republic. Now I would like to give the floor to the distinguished representative of Belgium. We have the floor, Ambassador. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Thank you, Mr. President. I wish to begin by thanking all the briefers for their presentations. In the very difficult context of Somalia, we should acknowledge uh, the positive developments and the efforts exerted. For example, the holding of the meeting in Garoué on uh, 12 May, bringing together the federal pre and the regional presidents. This can be described as encouraging, even though the expected results uh, may not yet have uh, been realized. I hail uh, President uh, Farmaggio for his uh, efforts to resume dialogue and encourage him to quickly follow up on the Garoué meeting. The report of the Secretary General enumerates other positive points, such as the commitment of the federal government to economic reforms and uh, biometric uh, record records for the troops uh, of the Somali National Army. Since Belgium is also a federal country, I cannot stress too much the need to keep close 
constructive relations between the federal government and the federal authorities. This kind of uh, cooperation is indispensable to make federalism an effective uh, system which can respond to the needs of uh, citizens uh, uh, with a good uh, faith uh, effort uh, to relate uh, with it. Unfortunately, there are still sources of discord and tension. Elections uh, in uh, Jubaland uh, are drawing ever closer. We must be particularly attentive uh, to the tensions created by elections. In order to secure the area of Lower Chabelle, stabilization measures uh, should also be adopted. I hail the creation of an interministerial task force uh, to prepare this work, and I would like to have uh, more information on the next steps. It is striking to see the scope of international support for Somalia, but it is important uh, to ensure coordination and transparency in uh, the support provided. I am thinking particularly of bilateral cooperation programs. It is essential for all partners of Somalia to work together in the same direction. Thank you very much, sir. I thank the distinguished representative of Belgium. Now I would like to give the floor to the distinguished representative of the Russian Federation. Thank you, Mr. President. We're grateful to the Deputy Special Representative of the UN in Somalia, Residon Zanenga, Assistant Secretary General uh, of Urs Ursula Muller, and Chairman of the Commission of the African Union, and Head of the uh, uh, African Union Mission in Somalia, Francisco Madero, for their presentations. The situation in Somalia remains uh, complex. We note with concern the growing activity of the terrorist group Al Shabaab. It continues to control uh, broad areas around the country. We're seeing its uh, fighters in, infiltrate the cities. According to reports by experts, the group has managed to set up an independent production of explosives. Al-Shabaab represents a threat uh, uh, at the regional level as well. Uh, a frightening reminder of that was the January terrorist uh, attack in Nairobi. Now, countering the terrorist threat is a top priority especially important is effective cooperation of the central authorities and the federal authorities with the support of the UN and the NAMSOM in building a national uh, security architecture. Now, the most important task here is to ensure the, uh, the gradual transition of responsibility for security in the country to the Somalis themselves. We expect that this process will be carried out in accordance with existing plans and also will take into account the concrete developments on the ground. Amazon continues to uh, play a key role in uh, uh, tackling security challenges. Its re reconfiguration should go hand in hand with the consolidation of Somali military and law enforcement bodies. The plan is to have active participation of Amazon in the preparation and holding of uh, Elections uh, planned for 2020-21. In the run-up to these uh, elections, which will be decisive for the future of the country, it would be unwise to carry out a uh, uh, an abrupt uh, reduction in the number of African peacekeepers in Somalia. In spite of all the difficulties, we also uh, have noticed uh, quite a number of encouraging trends. In particular, we note the efforts of Magadishu in building bridges with the federal states. There is progress in the uh, area of constitutional reform. Uh, there's positive momentum in uh, the creation of a legislative basis for the upcoming elections. The reform of the financial uh, and economic sector is, is uh, taking place quite successfully. Mr. President, the Horn of Africa is uh, experiencing major changes. We are convinced that the steps being taken by all countries, including Somalia, in reestablishing good neighborly relations will ultimately 
lead to the much desired stability and prosperity. At the same time, we would like to warn that achieving this goal will only be possible uh, while strictly uh, respecting the sovereignty of Somalia and uh, for ex external players not to interfere in the internal affairs of this country. We expect that uh, the new special representative of the Secretary General in Somalia will be guided by precisely these principles. In this connection, we welcome the determination of the authorities of the country to maintain a fruitful cooperation with the UN presence. Thank you very much. Thank the distinguished representative of the Russian Federation. Now I would like to give the floor to the representative of Germany. You have the floor. Yes, thank you. Thank you very much. Um, first, I would like to thank the, the briefers for their comprehensive briefings. Um, um, first, um, Mr. Um, Zenenga, I still have in my ear what you said at the beginning about the demor demoralized uh, um, situation of the UN staff, um, your place after um, the attack on the compound on 1st January, the uh, expulsion of the special representative, Mr. Haysam, and uh, also with regard to the UN staff, the treatment of the coordinator um, of the panel of experts. Um, I hope, uh, Mr. Zenega, that by now the, um, the morale of the UN troops, uh, of the UN um, staff is reinstated, and I hope also that the cooperation with the government um, is, is improved. Um, and um, from a German perspective, I only want to reconfirm our commitment to Somalia, um, our commitment also to the UN and all the international um, efforts undertaken in the, in the country. Um, I would like to make six brief points. First, um, to echo what several have said and, and before me, also um, my Belgian colleague, and uh, this is with regard to federalism. Both Belgium and Germany are federal countries, and uh, we know about federalism. We also know that um, a strong federal government um, does not exclude, quite the contrary, also strong um, federal member states uh, government. We have a strong government in Berlin. We have a strong government in Munich for Bavaria. And I think this is also prob possible for Somalia and, and Puntland or Somaliland. So I think this can work. Um, um, it's a bit unfortunate that the first meeting in Garouville was not successful. Um, I don't know if um, my question is, is there already a second meeting scheduled? Because we need, we think that um, these conversations have to be um, undertaken and have to um, have uh, results because they are also important for the second point I want to make, and that is that um, we need the constitutional um, review successful, the electoral law, the security reform. Third point um, with um, regard to, I want to pick up um, what um, several have said and um, the um, representative of the Dominican Republic just before, and this is the protection of women and, and children. Um, and in this context, I have a um, also one specific point, and this is um, sexual violence in conflict. Um, and we would encourage the government to strengthen the legal framework um, to protect victims and to prosecute <coughs> perpetrators. Um, this is recommended in the report by the Secretary General, and we uh, believe that this task should also be reflected in um, the mandate of AMISOM. Um, fourth point, security transition plan. Um, there the implementation is urgent. Um, we need a um, comprehensive approach as it is undertaken. That is joint and coordinated planning. Um, it has to be um, Somali ownership, of course, and buy-in from all stakeholders. In this context, I um, want to ask with regard to a first successful operation that was um, Somali-led in Lower Chabel. Um, what are lessons, if there are, what are lessons learned from this operation? Um, for security, we would also uh, plead for strengthening of police. Um, uh, police, strong police, is very important for the relationship um, between state and population, and at the same time, um, strong police also allows the military to perform the task that it's, support, it's supposed to do. 
fifth point um, in general um, for government, for all the different transition processes, um, we urge that women and youth are invited and included. Last point, um, I was struck by the um, briefing by ASG Miller with regard to the humanitarian situation, um, and not only you, but the other briefers also pointed to the severe dr uh, drought and the consequences. Um, so the number of people that are in need of humanitarian aid has increased, but also those um, affected by drought. Um, and the, the drought has also effects of communities, fragile communities and possible um, conflict. And therefore, we also believe that um, the um, climate change, um, or the consequences of climate change and the f is part of the, of the future mandate. Thank you. I thank the distinguished representative of Germany. Now I would like to make a statement in my capacity as the representative of Indonesia. Uh, first, uh, like others, I would like to express our appreciation to Deputy SRSG Zenenga, SRCC Madeira, and ASG Ursula Muller for their comprehensive briefing. I would like to highlight three points uh, for the Council attention. First, Indonesia stands by its conviction that continued and proactive engagement of the international community is essential to support peace and stability in Somalia. We welcome the commitment of the Somali government and the United Nations to strengthen their cooperation and deepen their partnership. Indeed, the relationship between the two must be guided at all times by the fundamental principles of sovereignty, national ownership, and mutual respect. My delegation support the essential roles of ANSOM in promoting the Somali government-led inclusive political settlement, the development of a functioning federal state, and the implementation of the transition plan. The strengthening of UNSOM's mandate to support the 2020-2021 election is a step in the right direction. These roles are especially pertinent as political impasse between the federal government and the federal member states continue to threaten progress on key political and security sectors. Second, we are seriously concerned by the ongoing threat and destabilizing, uh, destabilizing uh, activities of Al-Shabaab, which transcends beyond the Somali border. There has been a significant increase of Al-Shabaab attack in Mogadishu over the past two months, with incidents involving improvised explosive devices which took place almost every day. Al-Shabaab reported ability to manufacture homemade explosive, demonstrate that they are in a state of idleness, but continue to reinvent different means to commit atrocities. It is high time that we effectively cut Al-Shabaab from its sources of weapons and financing. Against this backdrop, continued presence of Amazon, as well as its need for predictable and sustainable funding, cannot be overstated. As the Council is about to deliberate on the AMISOM resolution, my delegation underlines that the reconfiguration of AMISOM must be done in a way that does not create a security vacuum, with full regard for the humanitarian impact and the safety of the civilian population. Somali security forces that will be taking over security responsibilities from AMISOM must be adequately trained and equipped. Accelerated capacity building is of paramount importance. Third, we must cognize that efforts to promote peace and stability are taking place against the tide of deteriorating humanitarian situation. And yet another severe drought has also been alluded by Ms. Muller just now. One third of the population require humanitarian assistance. 5.4 million people are expected to experience food insecurity 1.2 million children are projected to be malnourished in 2019. These no, are not simply numbers, these are human beings. With 2.6 million IDPs, Somalia has one of the largest displaced population in the world. We are concerned that the 2019 Somalia Humanitarian Response Plan is critically underfunded. The international community clearly has no magic wand to resolve the Somali situation but it could and ob obviously should do more to alleviate their humanitarian suffering. 
understanding the challenging operating environment for humanitarian actors in Somalia, my delegation urges all parties to respect international humanitarian law and remove all impediments to the delivery of humanitarian relief. I should like to close by commending the federal government for assuming ownership and demonstrating perseverance in executing its comprehensive reform agenda, some of which begins to bear fruits. We urge continued and sustained political dialogue between the federal government and the federal member states to resolve their outstanding differences. Lastly, my delegation pays tribute to the contribution of UNSOM, UNSOS, AMISOM, and all actors working to bring peace and stability in Somalia. Now, I would like to resume my function as President of the Council and invite the distinguished representative of Somalia. You have the floor, Ambassador. Mr. President, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, at the outset, I would like to offer my prayers and heartfelt condolences to the families and loved ones in today's terrorist attack in Mogadishu in the, this holy month of Ramadan, which injured and took the lives of innocent civilians, including my mentor, ex-Minister of Foreign Affairs of Somalia, and senior advisor to the Minister of Foreign Affairs, His Excellency Hussein Ailaba Fahir. We are more determined to fight the menace of faceless, borderless international terrorists. Since this is the first time that I take the floor for this month, Mr. President, allow me to extend my heartfelt congratulations on your assumption of the presidency of the Security Council for the month of May. We are confident in your able leadership and wish all the success in fulfilling your mandate. I would also like to take this opportunity to thank my colleagues, Ambassador Ray Zezenga, Dubati, uh, SRG, uh, and Ambassador Francesco Madera, SRCC, head of AMISOM, for, his long, for their long-standing constructive contributions to peace and security in Somalia. We take a note of the report and we continue to renew our mutual support and full cooperation in this regard. And I also want to um, acknowledge Her Excellence Ursula Muller, the ASG for the Humanitarian Affairs, for her reporting and briefing to the Security Council. Mr. President, even though it has been just over two years since the election of President Mohamed Abdullahi Formaggio, Somalia has witnessed progress which has been transformational. Thanks to strong political will, Somalia is on track on fulfilling key benchmarks it has set for itself, which is gradually bearing fruits and prosperity and stability for all Somalis. We are encouraged by key positive developments like collecting record tax revenue through automation and enhanced compliance to meet economic reform goals. However, there is a cost to any reform, and as we have managed it to, it to the best of our abilities, the government has since lost some political capital in the ongoing reform process. It's with this continued resoluteness, resoluteness and a sturdy attitude that the government has taken on the ambitious reform agenda in the security sector. We have worked tirelessly to ensure all our officers and all our military personnel are now biometrically registered as part of the electronic payroll reform to eliminate corruption and ensure our officers are paid on time as they have been for the past 25 months. This reform process will enhance the capability of the Somali National Army in terms of operation and implementation and the ambitious national security architecture and transition plan. And to answer the question asked and raised by my colleague, uh, His Excellency, the Ambassador of Germany, what the lessons learned from the Berita operation is if you fund and equip and train the Somali forces, they're capable of fulfilling their duties. <laughs> Nevertheless, uh, as Shabaab continues to be a threat undermining our effort to deliver security, we have made significant gains against the Shabaab in the past eight weeks, retaking strategic towns of Sabib and Barire, 
from Al Shabaab in Lower Shabelle region as part of the transition process. I would like also to, pros, uh, to, uh, I would like to express my gratitude to Amazon troop contributing countries for their commitment and sacrifices. Their deployment has created a space, political space, political process space, and humanitarian relief corridors. But we cannot effectively implement the transition plan without one hand tied in our back due to the long-standing arms embargo. It's with this regret that decisions made here in the Security Council and UN headquarters continue to impact negatively the military capabilities of our security forces in the fight against the terrorist groups like Al-Shabaab, a comparative and give a comparative advantage to Shabaab and continue to enjoy as a result. In Somalia, we have illustrated that contentious and sensitive issues can be debated while exercising pragmatism and political maturity. Within this month, the federal government of Somalia has succeeded in passing a petroleum bill in the lower house, which also incorporates a revenue sharing formula agreed by the federal government of Somalia and federal member states. In addition, the prime minister's cabinet approved a new draft election law, an important step in the political process to holding an election. The federal government of Somalia has evidenced in, is committed to the roadmap on inclusive politics, which is crucial to sustaining peace and conflict prevention. Mr. President, the Somali government remains fully committed to the promotion of human rights and realizations of equality of all its citizens. Despite the great challenge that we face, combined with the drastic reduction of the assistance in the area of human rights, promotion to less than half what it was the last two years, the government of Somalia has taken significant steps to promote human rights values with specific objectives, including reducing violence against women through Somalia's first dedicated legislation on sexual violences, which was unanimously approved by the cabinet in May 2018. On October 2nd, 2018, the federal government of Somalia signed the United Nations Convention on the rights of the person with disabilities and, ratify, and since has ratified in the parliament this month. A bill for the establishment of national disability agency was also passed in December 2018 and the national stability law is being drafted. Mr. President, investing in youth is the most effective way to build the Somali nation and counter the ideology of violent extremism like, like a Shabab. The Secretary General, Mr. Guterres, once said, I quote, I don't agree that young people are leaders of tomorrow. More and more, they are the leaders of today, unquote. Our young men and women have been the leaders of our change throughout our history. Therefore, today, more than ever, we need to equip our youth with the skills required in sectors of high growth and high employment potential. We encourage the UN agencies to train and recruit locally in order to give hope and opportunity to our capable young population in their nation building process. Mr. President, I'd like to turn the attention of the Council to the reoccurring humanitarian situation in my country, which continues to be a concern for the last few years. As the Secretary General report, report correctly stipulates, and ASG has given her report today at the Security Council, similar to last year's limited rainfall in the past three months has compounded existing dry conditions. With as many as 3.4 million people, according to the UN specialized agencies, are facing crisis levels of food insecurity as a result of water shortages and deteriorating crop yields. We strongly believe humanitarian situations must be addressed as a matter of urgency to avert humanitarian catastrophe. However, we must also invest in implementing and evaluating long-term solutions that place our people on the path to sustainable development. By taking a comprehensive prevention-oriented focus, we can together strengthen the nexus between humanitarian and the development assistance. Mr. President, 
federal government of Somalia is an upward trajectory and has made significant strides in the number of critical areas and extraordinary challenges remain extraordinary challenges remain as Somalis enter critical juncture of state building, federalization, as well as democratization. The federal government of Somalia would like to reiterate its commitment to maintaining accelerated progress of processes involving in implementing the roadmap. We welcome the United Nations commitment to supporting the federal government in its effort to achieve peace, stability, and sustainable development for all Somalis. The federal government of Somalia is confident that the recent established relationship of mutual respect and cooperation will be stronger in deepening its long-standing partnership with the United Nations to enable, to enable it to deliver on its mandate in supporting the federal government of Somalia in peace building and state building efforts. The federal government of Somalia would like to underscore that strengthens national institution and national cap capacities that bring about lasting peace and development. We urge the partners to work closely and execute federal government's led policies under the federal government's mandated bodies and institutions in order to endanger engender greater ownership and leadership. Finally, the federal government would like to thank United Nations Secretary General for his, for his able leadership and Security Council for its continued support to Somalia. I thank you, Mr. President. I thank the distinguished uh, representative of Somalia. Now there are questions that have been posed, so I would like to give the floor to Ms. Ursula Mueller to respond to comments and question if she so wishes. Thank you, Mr. President, distinguished members of the Council. Uh, thank you for your interest in the humanitarian situation at this critical time. Um, I also thank you for the support you indicated to um, uh, fund the um, upscaled humanitarian uh, response to uh, prevent um, uh, the further deterioration of the uh, drought situation. Thank you. I thank Ms. Ursula Muller, and now I would like to give the floor to Mr. Francisco Catemo. Cateno Jose Madeira to respond to comment and question that has been raised. Mr. President, the distinguished representative of Somalia has responded to the question presented by the German representative on what uh, the prospects, uh, um, what lessons are to be learned on the Sabid and Barire operations and on the future of uh, 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 to, to, uh, the need to, to, to empower the forces that have to continue and sustain uh, operations like these two. Uh, he spoke of the need to uh, um, ensure SNA's ability to generate forces a properly trained SNA, a well-equipped SNA, and an SNA who, which is, whose salaries are paid, guaranteed, and predictable. Uh, but also, most importantly, uh, Mr. President, an SNA like the one we saw in Sabit that respects human rights, that protects the population and their property, and uh, that does not uh, set up uh, uh, roadblocks and checkpoints, etc. These are the things we saw and we are seeing in Sabit. This is an army that we want to see multiplied in terms of numbers. And for that, like the Somali representative said, there is a need for us to continue to fund, support, and equip the Somali <coughs> National Security forces. These are going to, this way, they will have many more subjects <coughs> and this way there will be a transition that can preserve the gain so far accumulated. But another important lesson we have to draw from Sabid and Barire is that uh, the government is present and it is holding on to the uh, uh, um, recovered areas. The presence of the government is allowing for it to be able to win hearts and minds and keep the population on each side 
and avoid Al-Shabaab from reaching and recruiting those populations. Mr. President, the other uh, question uh, was, uh, what prospects for the implementation of the transition plan? We are implementing the transition plan. Mr. President, you remember when we adopted the transition plan, the issue of the drawdown and transition was uh, the draw, I mean, the transition and drawdown should be gradual, responsible, and with the capacity to ensure that the gains accumulated are not lost. But what we are seeing now is that uh, we, what is persistent is the time limit. The drawdown and the continued drawdown without taking into account the aspects of responsibility, graduality, and the need to preserve the gains. It is important there is, there is, uh, uh, that there is a, a, a correlation between the need to preserve. But uh, I just want to insist that uh, AMISOM will be guided by the evolution of the situation, and we are ready to comply with any decision that the UN will, uh, uh, the Security Council will see. But the other is, um, um, there is this, uh, the implementation or uh, uh, um, the issue of uh, integration of original forces. Mr. President, you can see that uh, Barire was uh, uh, um, recovered and captured by an integrated Somali force, an integration that has s s uh, sought to impede that original force is transferred into the Somali National Army as a clan army, a clan group, but it should be into the Somali National Army as part of a multi-ethnic, multi-clan component with the proper command and control. And I've seen and I'm seeing that this is a strategy that the government is undertaking to ensure that the regions contribute with forces, but these forces should not become a clan-based group that will try to push for their own clanic interests, but a, a, a force that uh, abides the Republican <coughs> principles of an armed force. So this is the way to go. If this persists, this continues, with the time there will be an integration that will be part and parcel of a force that can be able to operate everywhere in Somalia. These are the observations I could make, Mr. President. Thank you very much. Thank Mr. Madeira for the clarification. Mr. Senenga, do you <coughs> wish to respond, to add? Uh, thank you, Mr. President, and I thank council members uh, for their statements of support and for the questions that they have uh, raised. Uh, the questions from France have been addressed by uh, uh, previous speakers. I think um, I will focus only on the questions from the UK and Germany. Uh, on the UK, uh, I think the question was about uh, the prospects of the Somalia Partnership um, uh, Forum. Uh, all partners in the federal government agreed that uh, holding this uh, partnership forum is very important. Um, and we are working towards that. There is a preparatory committee which is uh, uh, putting in place the technical preparations. However, as long as uh, there is no uh, restoration of the cooperation between uh, the federal member states and the federal government leaders, uh, it might be very difficult to uh, realize the convening of uh, uh, the meeting. So we are continuing to encourage uh, resumption of dialogue and the scheduling of another meeting between the federal member state uh, leaders and the federal government leaders. Uh, it is important that they have a prior meeting ahead of the uh, SPF. Uh, the UK also asked about uh, key priorities on which the SPF could, uh, could focus. Uh, the federal government has set out its uh, priorities in the four roadmaps. Uh, all these are important. However, we believe that um, the SPF and going forward, all of us uh, should focus 
on those key priorities that will propel progress uh, across the board in Somalia. Uh, these are what we have called in our recent discussions the must not fail uh, priorities. Uh, the priorities um, uh, that would open up uh, the prospects of uh, further progress on many fronts. I would give the examples as uh, firstly the restoration of cooperation uh, between the two tiers uh, of government, the completion of the review of the constitution, uh, preparations for elections, including passage, passage of uh, the electoral law, and SNA and police force generation uh, to support the transition process and the ongoing uh, related um, uh, operations. Uh, then also achieving the cluster of benchmarks uh, that have been agreed uh, under the economic uh, reforms. Uh, we believe that in these areas, if we make progress, that would also propel progress across the board. Uh, very quickly, uh, on the questions uh, from Germany uh, on whether the morale of the staff is um, improved, uh, uh, the environment, the security environment is still very, very difficult. Uh, UNSOS is doing its best. Uh, to construct more uh, accommodation facilities, especially office accommodation, so that we can decongest uh, the areas where we have accommodated staff uh, who were working in uh, soft skin uh, uh, offices, and also to construct areas for social gatherings uh, that we had closed down uh, because they were in open spaces that are vulnerable. The visit by uh, Ms. Di Carlo uh, contributed immensely to um, improving staff morale. Uh, she engaged with them, and we now have currently a, a, a stock taking, a review uh, being conducted by um, uh, an independent team, uh, which headquarters is uh, uh, deployed here. They are also uh, engaging uh, staff uh, over more than a week, and that is helping also to improve uh, staff morale. Uh, we have very active and very capable uh, staff counselors who are helping in this um, uh, difficult environment, and we believe that uh, the deployment of the new SRSG will also contribute immensely uh, to the improvement of staff uh, uh, morale. Uh, we continue to uh, uh, update uh, the staff on the progress we are making uh, in repairing our relations with uh, the federal government, and this is also helping uh, in uh, reducing tension uh, among, within uh, the uh, uh, staff body. Um, is there a follow-up um, meeting to the uh, Garoway schedule? That was another question from Germany, as I had indicated in the briefing. Uh, there hasn't been any agreement on scheduling uh, the next meeting, but uh, the President and the Prime Minister continue to reach out uh, to the federal member states, and we are also encouraging uh, that they resume uh, their meetings. Uh, I would add just one point to the lessons learned on um, uh, operation from Operation Badbado, which is that uh, joint planning and a comprehensive approach has produced very good results. Thank you, Mr. President. I thank Mr. Zenenga for the clarification that he has provided. Uh, I see there are no more names uh, inscribed on the list of speakers. I would like to thank colleagues for all their participating participation today and the meeting is adjourned.